Welcome to Making Sense of Success, a podcast dedicated to finding the meaning of success and empowerment. I'm your host, Daniela. Stay tuned every Monday morning for new episodes. Interested in becoming a part of our community? You can find us on Instagram at Making Sense of Success. Stay tuned for future episode series and pod weeks. Email us at makingsenseofsuccess at gmail.com or shoot us a DM if you'd be interested in sharing your stories of success and empowerment. Thanks for tuning in and joining our journey. Enjoy this episode. Well, welcome, Lindsay, to Making Sense of Success. Uh, did you want to give our listeners a little bio about yourself so they can get to know you more? Sure, I guess. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my name is Lindsay Rosso. Um, I go by Lindsay Rosso online. I live in Vancouver, BC, and I'm a social media coordinator for a digital marketing agency in Vancouver. And I'm also an influencer blogger on Instagram. And yeah, that is my shtick at the moment. I also do lots of freelance work for small companies in Vancouver as well. So I have both feet heavily in social media at the moment. And I absolutely love it. Wow, that's so awesome. And I mean, in a time like now, right? It's a really big thing to be doing, especially just considering we're all at home, right? And a lot of us do use social media as a really um, big way of communication in our lives. Absolutely. Social media is major. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really exciting industry. And it's really fun to see, especially the smaller businesses grow when you're working really hard. And, you know, during 2020, the year we've had, um, I'm happy to say I've kept at least one of the businesses I work with, I've kept alive, which is really nice to know. Um, so yeah, it is you wouldn't think that it's a rewarding industry, but it really can be. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll dive more into it in a second um, about your journey and getting into social media. But I guess we'll start with a couple icebreaker questions just so we can get to know you even a little bit more. So the first one I'll start with is what is the best piece of advice uh, that you've ever given or received? Um, so I have two. My, my favorite quote ever is if you're in the, if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room that is like by far my favorite quote i think you can learn from something from absolutely anyone but i think there's there comes a point where you're you've hit your growth cap at a, either a, a company or if it's a group of friends or whatever not that you should ever like not hang out with a group of friends or anything but i think there's always room to experience something new or just put yourself out there, go on Eventbrite, go to all those cool events they have nowadays. I think there's just so much opportunity for growth. Um, so that's a really, a really important quote to me. I think just being super open-minded in life just gives you so much um, back if you're really willing to listen. Um, but the best advice I've ever been given actually was with one of my first jobs in my early career. And my boss asked me after, and, and, and like I interned with him. So it was an unpaid internship and he just said, well, okay, I'm going to hire you. He was like, I adore your work. You're awesome. He's like, how much do you think you should be paid? And I think I was like 20 or 21 at the time. And he would, I think I was getting paid like 15 an hour at the job I was working while I was interning. And I was like, I don't know, like maybe $16 because that was like a dollar more than I was getting paid. Right. At, when I was working at Nordstrom at the time and he was like, okay. He was like, I thought you were going to say something like this. And he was like, I just, he was like, look me in the eye right now. He was like, and tell me how much do you honestly think you're worth? And I was like, I don't know, maybe like 18. He was like, okay, Lindsay, he was like, I'm going to pay you 25 an hour. He was like, this is your lesson that you need to understand your worth. He was like, you're worth a lot, wow. you're very talented. So that was a really cool experience for me. And I'll always remember that because again, early career in 20, what was that? Like 2015, that was a lot of money for someone my age. So um, yeah, it was a really cool experience. And ever since whether, if you're an unpaid intern, it's, it's just understanding your worth. If you can only give five hours a week, you have to be stern and say, I only have five hours a week because I need to work 40 hours a week in order to pay my bills. You know what I mean? So right. that was a really cool experience. No, those are two really great pieces of advice. And I've actually never um, come in like contact with either of those. So like the first one really resonated with me too, because I kind of took that into my own life as well, that piece of advice without even 
ever really thinking about it until you brought it up. Um, I think it was maybe in my second or third and even fourth year of university just recently. I graduated, but yeah, and I, I started to kind of put myself out there more. Even if, say, my friends weren't available to go to a networking event or, like, an event we were interested in, like, on the topic that it was surrounding, Mm -hmm. I still went. And it was just so shocking to me that I was able to interact with people that I didn't know or that people were actually willing to, like, talk to you. You know, it wasn't necessarily awkward if you just put yourself out there and are willing to take the time, you know, to just like put on a smile and go and be open to the possibilities of meeting new people. Absolutely. And networking is not easy. Like I think at all. <laughs> you have to practice it a little bit, right? And the cool thing about networking and going to those events is everyone again is just super open-minded and, and there for a reason. So it it's not intimidating if you're in the right space, but um yeah, it it takes practice. It really does. Right. And if you're going to those events, right, and generally are interested in those topics, right, you're going to find other people there, most likely, that are also interested in those topics. So you there's something in common, right, to kind of bridge that um, awkward gap if that ever takes place, right? Absolutely. I totally agree. <laughs> and then the other piece of advice is also really important because I think I I did struggle with that. You have to be able to kind of pinpoint what you have to offer, right, to an employer, what makes you valuable, right? What can you bring to the table that someone else doesn't, right? And yeah. for me, th- that's still something I struggle with to this day. It's it's not an easy question I find. And if it is asked in an interview, it does kind of catch me for a second. And I do need like a moment to kind of ground myself and be like, okay, <laughs> this is what I've done. This is what the experience I have. This is what I can do. This is like my potential, right? Yeah, exactly. So, wow, no, those are really two great pieces of advice. So thank you for sharing those. No problem. And then the other question I'll ask you, which is literally this whole podcast, but uh, do you think your definition of success has changed over time? And if so, what would it be? Oh, my gosh, it's changed so much. (laughs) I would say, I don't know, like right out of high school, I think everyone has these big dreams and you're like, I want a car and a house and this and that. And just with life experience, it's just changed so much. It has nothing to do with things anymore. It is so much about relationships and being in an industry where you're happy and waking up every morning and being excited about the projects you're working on with work or just in general, like enjoying your job and enjoying your life. I live in one of the most expensive cities in the world, but I also wouldn't change it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 27. Everyone I grew up with now has a house and a car and this and that. And I still rent and I don't have a car. But I live in a city where I literally pinch myself every day. And I'm like, wow, I live here. So for me, the definition of success is like loving your life, to be honest. It has nothing to do with things or money or having a plaque saying you're the best social media marketer on the planet. Of course, I do have big goals for myself in my career but I think my definition of success definitely is just being happy and loving your life I think is my definition definitely and I can't even imagine probably like um the rent you have to experience right in Vancouver um let alone if you're also buying a house in Vancouver like those are two very different things from living in a different city in Canada um Toronto and Vancouver specifically are those two cities, right, that um, do have really expensive uh, housing markets. So I I can't imagine that. But at the same time, right, it's that experience that you're getting on your own, right, Um, in that type of city too. Specifically with social media in Canada, I assume those are two really big hubs, right? But wow. Yeah, and, and you're totally right. I guess, was there a moment specifically that brought you, rather than just like moving to Vancouver, right? But was there a specific moment that brought you to that kind of realization, you know, that it's not necessarily those things that bring me happiness, but rather like my life as a whole and the experiences I have? I think it's been a gradual thing, to be honest. I don't think it ever like slapped me across the face. And right. Things aren't important. I'm in fashion, like, I love fashion. Mm-hmm. I won't do that, like, a Chanel bag would definitely bring me a lot of happiness. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean. I will never, ever deny that, I promise. But at the same time, it's not what's important. I think it's been a gradual realization, um, definitely over the last, like, 
five years especially or so but um yeah it it, it wasn't ever there was not a defining moment it's just been growing and growing up to be honest right and I mean I don't think yeah you're you're probably right like I don't think anyone necessarily um always experiences that one like kind of light bulb you know that's like oh wow like this is it and also I do think sometimes products can give us a sense of happiness if that makes sense like if it makes your life easier or something or if it's really aesthetically pleasing sometimes that can just I don't know make your day or whatever like but you're right as well there are other aspects in life that also um are important and I think they give a different type of happiness if that makes sense I don't know if everyone would classify there's different types of happiness, but for me, when I think about it in my day-to-day life, there's different things that bring me joy, but in different ways. Absolutely. I agree. There's all sorts of different versions of happy, for sure. Yeah, because it could just make your, like, for me, there's some products, right, in my life, uh, or things, rather, that just make my life easier. You know, like, I would just have to do something extra if I didn't have that. But this exactly. just makes life easier, so it's it's nice to have, right? It's not essential, though, right? Exactly. And I guess we yeah. can delve into your story now. So I guess what got you into social media and digital marketing? Well, my career actually started out in fashion. I studied fashion in Ontario and oh, okay. in France. So I did a semester abroad in Paris and interned for um, like all the big designers. I was like literally an arm's length to Kim Kim Kardashian at like one of the shows. Like wow, wild, the most amazing experience of my life to this day. Um, But when I moved back to Canada, I took an internship out in Vancouver and I was like, okay, I'll be here for six months, then I'll move move back to Toronto. That was the idea. And then I just totally fell in love with Vancouver, so I stayed. Um, But I always wanted to get into styling. But ironically, the styling industry, it's really taken a hit because of social media, because now you can follow 10, 20, 30 bloggers and get so much style inspiration. You don't need to hire a stylist, right? And everyone's on their stories, swipe up for this, swipe up for that. You can buy their exact outfits, if you find someone who has similar style to you on Instagram, they essentially are your stylist. So that's kind of like what I like to think myself as, as a blogger now, mm. is like a virtual stylist for someone else. Um, but it was actually at the internship I was at. Um, it was for a menswear company and um, we had just been trial and error trying to figure out what we want to do with marketing. But the problem was we couldn't find anyone in Vancouver. Vancouver, hate to say it, is not a very stylish city. Everyone's very active, very into Mm -hmm. level. Um, But in terms of fashion, fashion, there, it it isn't a huge industry in Vancouver. Um, So we were struggling to find someone who had the knowledge with fashion. So finally um, I ended up in the role for marketing and had taken on marketing and social media for this company. And I would say fashion's my first passion, but social media is my second. So I totally fell in love with social media and just became such a social media nerd to this day. I'm always on webinars and reading up the newest like trends, algorithms, whatever you name it, I'm on it. Like I'm totally obsessed with it. So Um, yeah, that's kind of how I landed into it. And from there, um, like blogging picked up. So I did blogging full time for a bit and then I did freelance and then I worked with another smaller company and now I'm with a digital agency, which honestly is like a total dream. I'm just in my third month with them and it is seriously like my dream job. It's so great. And I mean, you have so much, like from what you've said, you have so much experience that it must have been super helpful when you got into blogging, right? In terms of like the social media aspect of it. I guess kind of like um, kind of a graphic design poster, you know, of how to generate that, like the networking as well as the likes and the comments and the follows, you know, engagement with other people, which has been super helpful. I mean, I guess, did you know all that stuff before you got started in like blogging? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah, I actually started my blog in college, and the idea was always to be anonymous. Like, it was always styling and that kind of thing. I never, ever wanted to be in front of the camera. Like, that was not my 
thing. <laughs> but um I mean yeah. it's not it's not easy. I've been trying to get more like with the podcast, I've been trying to kind of go more onto my stories and like speak. <laughs> but it's very weird being in front of a camera and like just sharing your life. <laughs> It totally is, and I've never, I was never someone who took interest in modeling or, and to be honest, my number one fear growing up was public speaking. And just like you said, it took me, I want to say sincerely, a good two years to get the hang of talking on story. Mm -hmm. Like now I'm like, no problem, no makeup on, don't care, I'll do it any any time of the day. Like my audience has seen me at my worst, they've seen me at my cutest, (laughs) they've seen all of it. (laughs) So, but it, it takes a while, but yeah, I was, I was kind of in, I was so in the industry with blogging and was so focused on having my own success there that it goes hand in hand when you're working for another business, because you know exactly what works for you and you have enough trial and error to know what that, what's going to work for a business as well. So it's great. Cause I'm, I'm in it and like, I live for this stuff. So it works hand in hand for um, a business as an influencer and as someone who's working with multiple clients, I'm working with quite a few businesses right now. Um, it's just, it's really cool to see what works for a restaurant and then what works for an apparel brand. It's really cool to just see it, It's so different to be honest, everything. It's just so different across the industries, but it is, it's really neat. And I guess for someone looking to get into the digital marketing and social media area, what advice would you give them in like starting off a career there or the steps to take um, to start your career off? Um, I think number one, honestly, is just not giving a f- what people think. Like you just, you have to throw that out the window. You know, it. If you're worried about so-and-so seeing this or so-and-so seeing that or someone judging you, this is not the industry for you. Like, you you have to have confidence and you have to believe in what you're putting out there. Otherwise, it's not going to be reciprocated by your audience. Mm-hmm. You, have to, you have to own it. Um, but otherwise, I would say educate yourself. I'm a huge, huge supporter of Later. Um, it's a social media uh, coordination platform. They have like this software that allows you to post um, like photos and stories on social media, but they have this huge vault of information. They have YouTube. Um, their website has amazing blog posts, but they are, I would say, to be honest, my favorite um, uh, like platform to find information on the industry. Um, there's tons of YouTube and like many courses you can take on the internet. There's so many free resources too. There's so much out there. So I think just really taking the time to educate yourself and then finding a niche if you're, whether you're trying to start a business or if you're trying to become an influencer yourself, you really have to find a niche, which is very hard nowadays. But if you do, you're on the right track. Right. And I mean, I think there's so many little things, even if other people are doing it right, once you add up those little things that you do, it still makes you unique, you know, Be just because not everyone's doing all those things, right? It's spread out between people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've just, And whatever makes you happy too. Like I found during quarantine, at least for me, I, whenever this pottery studio opened, I hadn't been to it since I was literally like 10 years old when I had a birthday party there. Then I remembered, oh. oh my God, there's a pottery studio like pretty close by in like the community I live in. I was like, why don't I just take some classes there, you know? And I love it now. And that's something, you know what I mean? That not necessarily everyone does. There is a community there and that's nice too. You can join a community, a different community than you're generally involved in, but I think those little things, when they add up, they do make you unique. Absolutely. I think so. And people, when people get to know your personality, I think that's really when you truly shine. <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, people. when you're able to, like, be yourself 100%, which, as we were talking about, that's not always easy when you have, like, a camera <laughs> pointed at you, oh, you know? God. But I guess, do you think people can develop that kind of thicker skin, if you want to call it that? Um Like, have you experienced any hate or anything? And, like, how do you cope with that? Oh, my God, girl, every day. (laughs) I can imagine. It's not easy. (laughs) I even just said to my friend, like, on the way to um, 
Ontario, I'm just like everything you do, someone's got an opinion. So you just, you need to be ready for opinions. You need to be ready for people just not liking what you're wearing, what you're saying, what you're doing. And you just need to be able to, you have the beauty of social media is you have a delete button. Like they're not standing right in front of you. And what are they like called keyboard warriors? You really get that. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to really remind yourself that it's coming. For me, it's not like I'm not hurt by it. The only time I'm ever hurt is if it's by someone who I admire or respect. Right. Or someone in my inner circle, that's when it hurts. If it's someone I don't know, to be honest, I, I'll always hear someone out and, you know, take a take an opinion, of course. Um, but a lot of the time, it's just, you know, you have to understand that it's coming from their own inner hurt and it has nothing to do with you. So that's... Yeah, that's like at the end of the day, right? It generally stems from their own problems in their own life. So it's not necessarily that they actually really mean truly what they're saying all the time right yeah. they might think that but it might not be as extreme as you think it is it might just be something going on in their personal life so this is like their outlet right which is quite unfortunate you know because like we oh, need yeah. to realize too like accounts are actually people like people posting their life on there it's not just like a fake person you know a fake account or something or a robot if there's actually a person right behind that so I think there's there's still a lot of things we need to progress with, like, within social media. But I, I think it's making those realizations for yourself and hopefully the person on the other side will realize that at some point too. But definitely something I think that takes getting used to. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, it does. The first few, you're like, oh, wow. But eventually, you, honestly, you get a good laugh out of it sometimes. Right, yeah. Well, what more can you do, right? Exactly. Sometimes you get a good laugh out of it. Other times, I, I sincerely have answered a couple times and been like, are you okay? Right. Like, <laughs> like, you know. I'm Which like, probably they're not. That's the thing, right? <laughs> they're probably I'm not okay. Like, are, are you okay? Um, and you just get like the mean messages back. And I'm like, right. So then you kind of, yeah, you realize like, what what's the point even of like yeah. engaging, period? Yes. A lot of the times you just don't for sure. So I know you mentioned uh, later earlier that one resource. Are there any other resources, I guess, that you would suggest to people that you really like and that you kind of use regularly? Resources in terms of like education? Or yeah, like anything, whether it be maybe like a podcast or that you like or like a YouTuber or something, an influencer that you really look up to that gives a lot of great tips or even an app or something like that, that just makes your life a little bit easier has helped you in your journey. So other than later, later is by far my number one, um, Hootsuite, which is another, the cool thing about actually these two companies, I would say that Hootsuite and later are two of the biggest, um, like social media software programs and platforms. And they're both based in Vancouver, which is really cool. Oh, right? wow. Huh. So Vancouver is a huge tech city, huge. Right. Yeah. Company, yeah. But Hootsuite has something called, it's called Hootsuite University. Um, I've taken that and that was really educational. Um, it's not free, but it definitely is worth it. Um, Sprout Social is a cool s platform. Um, Social Pilot I go to sometimes. And Buffer.com as well. Buffer is something like later, but um, I only use that for resources and education. Um, but they do also have some good stats sometimes. So I really like those ones. Well, that's great, and thank you for sharing those. Uh, I'll try to link those down below so that people are interested. They can go and find them and look uh, into them. But I'll hit you with one like last deep question, and then the pressure's off. <laughs> um, so totally take a moment to think if you need it. But the question is, what do you want our listeners to take away from this episode? I would say, yeah, if there's anything you could take away from this episode, it is if you're thinking about a career in social media or starting out as a blogger or an influencer or if you want to start a YouTube channel, anything online, I think the number one thing you could take away is to just start. I will be the very first person to say my first few blogging posts were so cringe. I've posted outfits. I seriously, I'm like, I cannot believe I posted that. But I've never deleted them. I think it's just fun to look back on and just laugh at yourself and see the growth you've made 
just starting and getting yourself out there is the very first thing you can do. You're going to make mistakes. Some people will love it. A lot of people aren't going to love it. But you find such an awesome community of people. I've connected with women all over the world. My platform personally is like seriously 95% women. Um, But it is really cool. Like I've made such great relationships on Instagram specifically. And I've just started my journey with YouTube. But um, I, I have PCOS. It's polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I actually talk about that on my platform quite a bit. And I've just like... I've, I've actually had girls come to me and be like, I didn't know that I had this. Like, I have all the same symptoms you've talked about and gone to the doctor and figured out that I actually have something wrong with me. And I'm like, wow. So she's That's like, amazing that you've been able to make that connection and even pass on, like, that form of education through your platform, though. Exactly. And it, everything, like, I even had, like, a much younger um, audience member. She was um, graduating grade 12 and... She was sending me her prom dress options. And she was like, so it is really, it's a really fun um, career. If you're thinking of making it a career at the moment, I'm just doing it as like a side hustle. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of pressure when you're not doing it full time. If you are doing it full time, I will say it is a lot of pressure. But um, if you have blogging on the side, it is such a fun hobby to have. And I highly suggest it. It's been a great um, industry to be part of. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of what it's all about, building a community, a strong community that aligns with who you are, right? So you find people that have a lot of similar interests to you. So that's really beautiful. You've been able to do that. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay, for taking the time to come on and chat with me today. Thanks for having me. It's oh, been of so course. Nice to you as well. Did you want to share your socials so people can find you and connect with you? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, My platform across everything is just Linz Rosso. It's L-I-N-D-S-R-O-S-S-O. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube. I have a Facebook page if you're into Facebook. Oh, definitely join it. (laughs) Uh, It's usually my grandma and my aunts. (laughs) Uh But my primary platform is Instagram. So I'd love to have you guys over there. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe and give us a rating. Also check us out on Instagram at Making Sense of Success and tune in next Monday for our next episode.